but 30 seconds. Yep, here we go. We are live. We are live, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Um, we are doing something really, I think, uh, quite fun and exciting tonight. We've decided to go live on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube. And if you're wondering how we're doing that, I don't really know, but my husband has worked it all out. <laughs> so he is the true hero in this. So it's really, really exciting. Um, we've got three cameras for those of you on YouTube and on Facebook, and they'll be alternating um, around. But, uh, and you can probably see those of you on YouTube and Facebook right here. You can see what we're gonna be doing tonight is book binding. So just, I, I think just really a brief, um, uh, introduction is, uh, well, I shouldn't say brief introduction, but yes, why am I all of a sudden repairing books? As many of you know, I am doing uh, my master's in country house studies, and my subject is Alberta, the unknown American heiress, who is my husband's great-grandmother who came over during that gilded age. She's from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. Uh, she had four children, I had four children, and she was a yogi. That's what makes it, I think, quite um, extraordinary. And um, she basically uh, was, has, was an archivist herself. So she was an archivist herself, and she kept everything. And we didn't really discover this until recently, to be perfectly honest. So we didn't... Um, discover this until recently. I'm just going to put this back to here. And, uh, and once I started to uncover more and more, I realized that she uh, was able to save pretty much every letter that she um, received. But more importantly, she actually, um, she actually kept letters that she wrote to, in particular, the three kind of most important people um, in her life. So the three most important people in her life, which was her brother, her mother, and her aunt. And of course, her husband and her children were, were important as well, and she wrote to them as well. But on a consistent basis, she wrote to her American family, and that's what's so extraordinary, that she was pretty much writing to them every single day. And they, those three people, her brother, her mother, and her aunt, all preceded her in death. So she was able to uh, keep, those, um, uh, keep those letters. So that's just a summary um, of where we are. And every week, I'm going to try to come on at the same time. So Thursdays at 8.30 UK to book bind, to repair some leather, um, to repair um, uh, lots of different, I think, journals and diaries that we have of Alberta's as well. So I've been really studying this recently, book binding, and I thought it would be fun to do together, especially for those of you who are passionate about genealogy, if you're passionate about archiving, um, this is something that we can start to do together every week and we can really learn together and I think that's what's so wonderful about these live streams and about um, just I think family history is so important and preserving it and that's what I'm trying to do and hopefully we can do it together. So I have an array of different sort of Alberta-esque um, bits here that I wanted to share with you. I'm not going to be, obviously we're going to do one today, we're going to do a book um, we'll be doing a book, but if you look closely here, so this has H, so it has um, the coronet here, and it has H for um, Hinchingbrook, and this would have been, you know, a writing pad, um, and uh, the inside's still quite nice, but you can see that the leather on the edges, um, it's got sort of that... Uh, red look. So I have um, here, which is fantastic. So I have cellugel leather, um, and that is really helps with this red rot. We're not going to be doing that today, but we'll be doing that another time. Um, the same goes, and I'm just going to put this to one side. And 
let's see here. The same goes for, um, this was recently found. This is Alberta's, uh, it would probably store her letters in here, most likely. We don't, haven't found the key yet, so I need to take it to a locksmith. It's, um, it's got a, like, some good patina, as I like to say, some good patina on it. But in particular, it has, uh, well, I'll turn it around this way, and I'll change cameras there. It has her name, Alberta Montague, here. So this would have been a gift for her, or sh probably a gift, but before she became the Countess of Sandwich, because after that, she was known as Alberta Sandwich. So this would have been after her marriage in 1905, but before she became the Countess of Sandwich in 1916. So again, there are bits of repair here, and in particular, you can see that the leather here is um, coming off. And I'm just gonna give a close-up of that for those of you on YouTube and Facebook. You can see here that the leather is coming, is coming off here, and all that means is that I will need to glue that back together. So that just gives you an example, one more of, well, a couple more. We also have the Hinchingbrook um, letter holder, beautiful, but again, it's come away from the wood. Uh, it's come away from the wood here. And again, I will be repairing that, um, which I'm really, really excited to take up these new skills and actually do it myself because I think it's putting, in my view, it's putting a little bit of um, love back into what Alberta, the treasures that Alberta left us. And in particular, we're not going to be doing it tonight. Um, not that one. I'm going to repair that. But in this case, we have um, Alberta's diary. So I just want to point out the spines here. So this diary was written when she was between <clears throat> the ages of 11 and 13, between 1888 and 1891. And you can see that the uh, the spine has come away, so we will be repairing that. And also, um, something really quite fragile is another one of her diaries, and we will again be repairing that. And this diary was written between um, 1899 and 1901. And you can see the leather has, uh, is about to come off on this one. On the bottom here, the leather has come away. So the leather, leather has come away. And so this is going to be quite a tricky one for me to repair. And I will have to remove some of the old leather, but also I will be using uh, the cellugel leather just to stabilize it, just to really help stabilize where it is. Um, I won't necessarily be able to fill in the holes unless I back it, which having said that, I might do. I might put... Um, a piece of book cloth all the way on the back, but probably not. Again, you have to determine, and I had a really good conversation with um, Michelle today, who's one of our um, team leaders for the Alberta Research Project, who studies all, who, is, who knows how to conserve, she's a conservationist, um, and um, a conservator, I should say, and, and she um, uh, knows how to, you know, she's studied this for 20 years. So she was invaluable in her advice with me today on a Zoom on a whole bunch of uh, different questions that I had for her as far as the muniment room and archiving papers, repairing papers, how do I, um, the leather, looking at the book binding and um, just how we can start to stabilize. And, you know, there's a real question and Michelle made a really good point. And, um, you know, if you look at something like the Hinchingbrook letterbox, of course it looks sort of, you know, aged and that you know, for me that's the patina yeah so that's the patina on here and I don't want to make this shiny and new but I do want to repair it so that it can sit on my muniment room desk so having said that um uh I am going to repair a book. So I thought tonight, those of you who are interested as well, you could just follow along. I'm going to take it very slowly. And this is one of the books in the Muniment Room. It's not a, a valuable book. Um, I'm starting out, I've done a few already myself. And so I'm starting out just slowly but surely and using books that I feel, um, you know, if I don't get it perfect, it's, it's going to be okay. Right. So 
Um, gosh, I've got so many of you online all over the place. I just want to say hi again to everybody on Instagram, on Facebook, on uh, YouTube. And my hope is that I'll be doing this once a week. Um, I probably won't have um, what I've just spoken about every single week. We'll just get right into the book binding or the repair, whatever repair we'll be doing. And again, I'm learning all of the time. I actually watch YouTube videos most nights understanding how to do this. So I've got my kit here and we're going to repair this uh, spine here. So we'll be repairing the spine and making it look, I think, quite a, a lot better than it is already. That is for sure. So first and foremost, this book is a bit, it's got just bits of bits on it, dirt. So I'm just going to take um, this sort of special um, conservation um, and it's got a bit of a powder to it and what it does is it gently gently starts to remove and I can already see it starts to remove without damaging um, the book just starts to remove um, bits of dirt um, and it's got a nice powder to it you can see probably the powder coming out and that's okay that is just it's already looking better that's what's brilliant about it I can already see it. it's fantastic so Again, it's the patina. I'm not trying to make my, look, my book look brand new, but I am trying to um, clean it before I start the process. So before I start the process of it, and then I'm just going to wipe my um, board so that it's nice and clean. So here we go. White and ready to go. So what I have is just some of the tools. It, um, what I'll be creating the spine with is actually an acid-free archive folder. Um, it's quite sturdy. It's solid. Um, that's what I use. So this is actually a, a good acid-free archive folder and you can see it's quite tough. It's almost, it's even tougher for me than a manila envelope. That's going to be my book spine that I'm going to be creating. And then I have two types of book cloth. So the book cloth I'm going to use is I'm going to use black. So I'm going to use black. And you, the way I'm going to do this today, you won't even really see, I mean, you'll see bits of the book cloth, but not too much because I'm going to put it underneath the book cover. Now, you don't have to put it underneath the book cover. You could put it over the book cover, but we're actually going to take off the entire spine and we're going to um, put it underneath. Then I just have my um, PVA glue in a pot and in here with a sort of a fine needle nose right there. I have a sh pencil sharpener and I have my new favorite tool, which is a bone folder. And that just helps to make sure that everything is uh, crease free. Some book binder scissors. So really cool book binder scissors. Love these. And um, uh, also I have, da -da -da, um, I've got basically a really good, um, well, scapula, but box cutter if you like. So, that is what we're going to be doing and uh good all you i've just seen some um comments on youtube saying we're going to be learning a lot um and i hope you do as well i'm really excited about this and thank you all for joining so what i'm first going to do is going to take my ruler and i want to create uh the spine so basically the new um spine support so I'm going to do things in centimeters just because I've been over in this country long enough that everything I do now is in centimeters. So I'm just going to measure roughly the spine and I can do it this way or when it's up, but it is uh, about three and a half centimeters and I'm just going to check that just to make sure. And yeah, it's a little bit over. I'd say it's like three, um, 3.7. So Number one, just put my book to the side, taking my card, and I'm just going to switch it on this side. So 3.7, I take my pencil, and I'm going to mark, I'm going to go to the edge of it, and I'm going to mark to about 3.57, I should say. 3.5, sorry, 3.7. 3.7, not 5.7. 3.7 is there. Great, and then I'm just gonna draw a line. And I'm really just kind of eyeballing it. I'm not using um, spirit level, I'm just gonna eyeball it, but it looks good, and then I can get it straight 
on here as well. So that's all straight. And draw my line. Perfect. Um, okay, and then I'm just going to spread this out. So from here, you can cut it if you'd like to cut it, um, or you can, it's up to you. I'm probably going to use my scissors actually to cut this one. You could use your box cutter as well. You could use one of those fancy paper cutters, you know, that you put it under, I don't even know what they're called. Um, I'm not going to be using that. Um, we do have one here actually. Um, in the Matt Britain State Office, but I think for the purposes of this, I just need some scissors. Right, so I'm going to just put this to the side. So now I've created my book support, book spine support, so that's that. Now, next I'm going to take my book back and I need to measure. Now, when I was first learning how to uh, um, repair spines, I thought, of course, you would just measure from the top of the spine to the bottom of the spine, but that is incorrect. So you measure from the top of the book cover to the bottom of the book cover. So that's, I'm measuring that. I'm just gonna do a little fold there. So do a little fold, put my book away, bring out my straight edge and um, draw a line. And then I will, here we go. So draw a line and then I'll take it and I'm going to use my book binder scissors and I'm just going to cut that. Again, I could use a box cutter, but there we go. Right. So here is my book spine. It's a little bit longer than the spine itself, but that is actually what we want. Right. So from here, next up is, next up is complicated. And this is where I always do get a little bit nervous. Um, and that is we're going to remove the book spine. So we're actually going to remove the book spine. Now, on the book spine, you'll have something and you can even use your um, bone folder. If like my shoulder of the book has, because the spine is coming away, it's kind of hard to see it. But you'll see every... Uh, book spine has what it's called like the shoulder and it almost feels like a shoulder going over into from the spine into the book cover itself. So what I want to do is again take my straight edge and from the shoulder, so I've got my shoulder here, I want to measure um, about I mean, it's tiny, like an, I'll go at this time an eighth of an inch, but it would be almost like um, not even a half of a centimeter, almost like point. I'm, for me, I'm going to do like 0.4, right? Which is almost, an, uh, yeah, I'm going to go a little bit less. So actually, no, I'm going to go to 0.5 centimeters on this one. So I'm going to go to 0.5. It just depends on, but you want just a tiny, tiny bit. And okay, so I'm just going to mark that just a little bit more, everybody. Right. So I've marked that. And now I'm going to take it, uh, it down. So again, trying to get it as straight as possible on one side. So I'm just, again, about an eighth of an inch. Well, 0.5 centimeter um, over from the shoulder. And I'm just going to draw my line. Make sure I've got that. Draw my line there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I can just see my line. Yes, I can. And do the exact same thing. So here's my shoulder right here. And I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch or even 0.5, there we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw here. You can kind of eyeball this as well, so you don't have to always measure, once you start to do this, the sort of eighth of an inch or the um, 0.5. Okay. Now, I've got both of my lines, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take box cutter or, you know, something incredibly, incredibly sharp, 
and um, it's and again I'm going to use my ruler here I've got a um, proper stainless steel ruler here so it's sturdy and I'm actually going to go I know scary into the book but it's okay I've learned so I'm going to cut into the book and you will think oh my gosh I'm cutting into the pages you're not it's impossible yep so I've learned that as well so I'm just going to cut into the book and just make sure you've got it because we're removing this remember right let me just see how that's done and then I'm going to use the other side of this to see if I can start to sort of get it up probably need to do a little bit more here there we go just at the very very end here there we go okay and then pull that so what we're doing is we're pulling um, I've taken my the um, the part of my knife that's not sharp and I'm starting to pull away the cloth so I'm pulling away the cloth and then I can use my bone folder and really once I just get one corner and then I can start to move it down carefully and it starts to pull away very very carefully you might come into places that might be a little bit more difficult like I've just got a difficult place there I might have to use sort of the back of that just to get it in but for the most part it's pretty easy to start to pull it away I mean it take this is to me the most I would say time consuming and I'm trying to be super super careful here um, as you can probably tell so this was definitely the more time consuming and it might mean that I just need to cut into it a little bit more I think on this bit I do just a tiny bit more and get it in there so you've got to put some muscle I've learned that because you think oh I've got to just be super careful but once you've got it then it starts to pull away and you can just sort of there we go much better pulling it away and this was when I first started doing this this was the bit that made me like so unbelievably nervous I was like what and also I think for books that are older so if you've got older books you know the cloth has been on there for a long time and it's it can get you just think no how is this ever going to come off but in the end it does so chat amongst yourself while I do this or you can watch me carefully taking this out being really really careful we're pulling this away because we are going to take this off eventually and yeah that's starting to come away which is what we want hooray and just want to make sure and we, what we want to do is we want to have just and you can carefully once it starts coming away it will start to pull away even more so because we're going to be putting the book cloth underneath it so we'll be putting the book cloth underneath this and again like I said you don't have to do that you you know this I'm making it much I'm making it more difficult for myself but also I wanted to make sure that I I learned this the um, I'm just gonna go a little bit more here that I learned this the the right way so that there are times that I think I might think well do you know what I, I can just put the book cloth over um, the book and you've seen that before you've seen it you know um, uh, the book cloth kind of hanging out and that's definitely obviously feasible so this one's a real wow tricky one but it is I'm getting there everybody and then we've got to do the other side um, here we go okay and then once it's there nearly there to the end just makes it so much easier I can pull it away yep and the end sometimes I find also I found uh, working with this just a little bit tricky 
and then just getting in there and then you're just using the edge of that. There we go. It's quite satisfying. And the other thing about this that I've really found is that you have to be completely mindful. Like you can't be thinking of anything else <laughs> when you're doing this. So you really do stay in the present moment. And that for me is like doing yoga, right? Got to stay in the present moment. So it's wonderful, right? So now I've got one side, everybody. And I'm just going to start to gently pull away this, um, the cover. I know, crazy, right? So I'm going to pull it away probably, and if you're wondering like how much, and you can always use your bone folder to help you, I would say about half an inch um, away from the shoulder is really, we're going to glue it back on, but half an inch. So I'm just using my fingers here just to properly pull this away and carefully also, just so I've got enough. It's all going to be glued back, but there we go. Okay, so I'm quite pleased with this. So I have pulled it away here and then you can see I have the spine on this side and this, I'm just going to use my, will pull away as well. So that was, um, you can see it's quite damaged there anyway. And I'll use my bone folder now. And I'll just start to pull this away. There we go. So I'm literally taking the spine off. I know, crazy. Here we go. Ta-da. Woo, that was a lot of 100 years. This, by the way, in the inside of this book, it says 1936. So you can start to see here that we have, we're taking it out. So um, we're taking it out. You can see that there was another um, spine here and that's brilliant. We're just gonna reinforce it even more, um, which is fantastic. So I'm not gonna remove this bit. I'm just gonna reinforce um, this and then put this back on. So I'm just gonna flip this over, being very careful to do so. And yeah, so did I mention that this was 1936? I think on the inside, I'll show it to you in a second, on the inside, um, 1936. Um, oh, thank you. Um, yes, it's, it's alternating everybody. I'm gonna go a little bit closer. So I've set up on the YouTube, cause we've got three cameras here. Because I'm concentrating so much, Luke has set it up so that um, it goes every, I think, 20 seconds to different cameras, but I also can do that as well. So I'm going to go close up for those of you on YouTube now, and I'll hold it. So I've drawn my line, and again, it's about an eighth of an inch away from the shoulder. And you can see here, I mean, the shoulder's quite damaged here, but you can see the shoulder there. I just wanted to use my bone shoulder just to show you that. So, and I'm going about an eighth of an inch. I've already drawn my line hard to see that on camera because it's pencil and it's against a, a blue but I've drawn my line and now I'm just going to take my blade and really cut into it and again I have learned you've got to do much more pressure than you actually think which I was quite surprised when I first did the first couple of books I was like wait what um because you've got to get into that and you're not going to go in, you know, it's got, um, it's just the cover we're cutting into. So I'm going to remove that. And then again, I need to be able to take this off. So I'm just going to use, not the sharp side. Whoops. There we go. And head into there. There we go. And just kind of use my um, box cutter just to start it. And then once I've started it, then I'm going to use my bone folder. So again, those of you chatting online, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, you know, start to chat with everybody and let everybody know. Um, uh, so nice. Um, uh, let everybody know what, if there's a book that you're interested in sort of rebinding um, and sort of making it just, uh, again, you're trying to stabilize, well, I am definitely, I'm trying to stabilize for the future. So what I'm trying to do is just 
make sure that these, um, you know, the archives in particular um, are saved for future generations. And to me, that is just unbelievably important. So again, I'm just going to go into the corner here and let's sort of take that out and be super careful. There we go. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to go in. Okay. So you just kind of, you're sort of up and down to begin with, as I was just watching. So you can see I'm pushing in to the book and then coming up, pushing in and coming up, pushing in and coming up. Do you see how that's coming off everybody? But I, there's a lot of pressure here. So there's a lot of pressure. It's not that you're just taking it all the way down. You're pushing, 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 and really removing it away. So this side seems to be coming out, unless I'm just getting better. This side <laughs> seems to be coming out. Um, I just want to get this edge here so I properly get it. This, this side, um, I was going to cut into that bit. This side seems to be coming out um, hilariously a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So again, those of you on YouTube and Facebook, you can see and I'm sorry, Instagram doesn't allow you to do three cameras because we tried to look at that tonight. So Instagram, I'm afraid. Um, if you are interested in seeing this up close and personal, you can always switch off on Instagram and head to um, YouTube or Facebook. So again, I'm going in. There we go. And there's some really, wow. Thank goodness for yoga. Pulling it away carefully. Got that. And I'm going to go this way. There we go. It's quite satisfying. There we go. And hopefully everybody on YouTube, you guys can see what's happening. I know you can. Okay. Almost. The ends are meeting. Lot of pushing here. And just making sure that we get it. Right, and then I can start to pull it away in a second. Okay, there's that. I just got to get this last one. There we go. There we go. And this last one. Okay, great. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pull this away. So remember, we're going to do a half an inch. So I'm just going to start to pull this away. Fantastic. Being very careful. Um, and I do advise if you are interested in learning how to repair your spines, um, repair sort of leather uh, that is of you know historical significance, um, I would um, make sure you do a few test um, runs here. So I'm gonna move that back to there. So I pulled this back, everybody. So I pulled this back, I'm really happy with it. And now what I need to do is take off the, um, the rest on this side. So again, I'm just gonna use my little sort of the uh, bland edge, edge of, the nice, of the knife and then get in there and then use my bone folder. And this is going to remove I know it's crazy that it does that. I was like, what? When I was first learning this. Um, sometimes you just got to get in there a little bit more. And great. So I'm just basically removing. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah, nice. Here, I'll get this a little bit close up for everybody. So you can see. And so I'm removing this. Okay. And here we go. I have removed basically the spine now. There we go. I'm just going to take that. So what needs to happen now is you can probably see it. Here's the spine. Is... I'm just going to, again, give it a good clean. 
So I'm just going to give it just a little clean here with my special um, conservation um, uh, sponge. So this is a good, I mean, this is amazing what it does. Conservation sponge and just kind of get it in there and just really kind of clear it out before I reattach the spine. So that's super important. So just making sure of that. And also it's going to help, um, here we go. Uh, the, I love this sponge actually. It does make a little bit of a mess, but I do love it. Right, so now, that's the hard part. At least um, for me, that is the most tedious uh, kind of bit about the whole process, and that's the hardest bit. Now, you don't remember what I was saying earlier is, I, I, you know, I could have not have done it that way, and instead um, I could have just removed this, the spine, I could have just, just done uh, the box cutter, removed the spine, and then used the book cloth to go over, um, to go over on the side here, but then you would see the black. The reason I've opened this up is because I'm going to put the black book cloth underneath it and then fold it over. Yeah. So I've done it kind of the hard way, but I've done it that way so that I know how to do it in future. Next up, I'm just going to put my book now to one side. So I'm just going to actually stack it up like that. There we go. Um, put the book to one side. And next thing I need is my uh, book cloth. So what I, um, in fact, I'm going to remeasure this just so I remember. So we've opened up about a half inch here. So we just, and I'm going to measure that. Um, so I'm going to, and that's about one and a half centimeters, uh, approximately a little bit over half an inch, right? So if you're working in centimeters, I did about a, one, I like to bring it over about a half inch or one and a half centimeters. Um, remember the spine itself, the width of the spine is roughly that sort of three, seven, three point seven. So I've got basically, um, a uh, centimeter and a half on either side, and then 3.7, so that's going to give me 6.7. So I need to make my book cover 6.7 centimeters long, or at the equivalent in inches. You could do a half inch, and then remember, I think I said that this was about two inches on either side, so um, you're looking at three inches, but I'm going to go for, um, what did I say? One, two... Wait, three. <laughs> I said, here we go. Now I'm confusing myself. Here we go. I said, there we go, 3.7. Um, Phew. Okay, so I ordered this lovely, amazing book cloth. It's made from linen. It's fantastic. And that's what we're going to be using to make sure to reinforce our spine. So again, I'm going to go in centimeters and I'm going to measure out 6.7. There we go. So 6.7. And I'm going to draw. Da -da -da, there we go. Here, here, here. There we go. 6.7. There's my pencil. Take it to here. There's my pencil and then my straight edge. And make sure that that's all good. Yep. Great, 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 great. Let's just get that there. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to draw my line and go up. And again, draw here. Okay, so now I've got a big long line. Obviously, I'm not going to be using all of this, but I am going to um, cut some of it and then cut it up instead of wasting the whole strip. 
So again, that brings me back to the length of the book uh, covers inside or outside book covers. So if I look at centimeters, I am pretty much at 21 centimeters. So I'm at 21 centimeters and there we go. Just, I just like to double, triple check that. Yeah, 21 centimeters. So again, I'm going to take that from here and go to 21 centimeters here. It was a little bit less than that, so I'm just gonna go a tiny bit less to there. There we go. Draw across. Make sure that that's straight, everybody. Where's my pencil line? Yeah. Okay, great. And draw. Okay. Excellent. Now, for me personally, I'm going to use my book binding scissors just to cut. I'm going to go right up here. This line. That's a beautiful thing. You can use your box cutter. So you can ha happily use your box cutter as well. But it, I did it on the last book. I actually used the box cutter as well on the last two books. Um, but I have found that these book binding shears are so fantastic. They're absolutely brilliant. Like I, they're my new favorite toy. There we go. Okay. And they cut such a good straight line. It's unbelievable. Okay. Um, great. So that's my book cloth. Fantastic. Let me see. There we go. My goodness. Um, you guys are so lovely. Such nice comments on YouTube. Right. So I've had my book cloth, book cloth, book cloth. And what I first need to do is I need to glue. Remember this? Our spine. I need to glue the spine. Um, in. So I do need to glue the spine in. And everybody, I have just made a mistake. So not a big mistake. I've just realized what I did. There we go. Don't worry. It's all fine. I can use this one. What I forgot to do, back up, um, is I forgot to say that we need a half inch on either side. How did I do that? Um, so for this, we're just not going to use this. Um, we're going to use the other one. So there you go. But I need a half inch above the top of, um, the measurement of the full length of the cover of the book. So about a half inch is fine. So again, one and a half centimeters approximately, uh, well, a little bit less than one and a half centimeters, but, um, how silly of me. So let's do the math together. And um, the, so we've got 21 centimeters, and then I'm just going to add three centimeters on top of that. So one and a half on one side, one and a half on the other. So that gives me 24 centimeters. Anyway, it was all going so well. <laughs> just kidding. So luckily, I don't have to do too much more. So I'm going to go to, like I said, 24 centimeters. I already have it measured out. The um, width is fine. So now I'm going to go to 24 centimeters. As soon as I put that book spine on it, I thought... Wait a minute, something's not right. Here we go, but easy fix. 24 centimeters, take it across, and then I'm gonna do my cut again. And I'm sure I'll be able to use this spine um, for another book. There are plenty in the Munimate room. All right, so let's redo this and cut. There we go. And then I'm going to cut from here. And again, like I said, I could use a box cutter. In fact, I'll do that this time around so everybody can see that as well. So you can just take your box cutter. It's really lovely. And take it all the way down. I just find sometimes with the black on the... Um, the black, you can see it, it's already coming out. In fact, I am going to use my book binder shears. The black with the pencil, it's harder for me to see the line, whereas when I have my book binder shears, it's just much easier. 
because the pencil clearly blends in with the black from the book cloth. There we go. Okay, we've done it right this time, you guys. So, there we go. And I'm just going to take that right off. Okay. So, now we can put that to one side. Right. Let's do that again. I am going to eyeball my book spine. So it's about center, um, same distance on the top and on the bottom there, um, so that it's about uh, center, so you can see that. And I'm gonna glue this in first. So what kind of glue do you use? Well, we're gonna use PVA. Um, as when I was talking to Michelle today, everything you do when you're conserving you, um, it, well, especially with what I'm doing here, you want to make sure that it's reversible. So we're not doing uh, something permanent that can never be reversed, right? So I am going to take my scrap paper. So I just have some waxy kind of uh, scrap paper when I'm gluing. And I'm going to take my clean brush here, and I'm just going to... Uh, uh, put some PVA on the book spine itself, and then I will attach it. And then we still have some more cutting to do. So there's that. Put that to one side. And there we go. Put that to one side. I've got that ready to go. And then I'm just going to take it off and take it onto... Um, the, here we go, I'm just gonna put that down. Just make sure I've got the wrong, the right one. And I'm gonna glue it on. So again, I'm just eyeballing it to begin with. And again, with PVA, you can kind of move it around a little bit what sits on, there we go. And I'm gonna take my bone folder. And from here, again, I'm just going to really push into it so that it sticks. Okay, there we go. So that is glued on. So that's glued on. Now, before I actually, um, uh, before I actually, um, thank you all so much. Um, uh, yeah, I was gonna use the box cutter on the ruler as well. I could have done that as well, good point. Um, and I was thinking I was going to do that and I don't know why I didn't do that actually, but scissors have just become much easier for me. So from here, um, what I want to do now is at the bottom and the top of the uh, bone spine, I'm just gonna draw a little line there so I don't even necessarily need my ruler, draw a line. And I'm gonna get this close up for you guys in there. So you can see, I'm just gonna, um, where is my pencil sharpener? It was here. Oh, here it is. I'm just gonna sharpen up my pencil a little bit. So what I wanna do is I just wanna outline, if you like, the corners here. So I'm gonna outline a corner here, and I'm gonna outline a corner here. So just, you can, you can draw it, you can use your straight edge um, out, and I'll, you're gonna see why in a second. And then do the same thing here, just drawing it out. And then I'm gonna do the same thing along this side. And I'm just gonna draw it out. There we go. And on that side, I have to do it the other way. Now, this is where it gets quite fun. Well, at least I think it's fun. So first we'll do this side. So I've made in one sense an X at the very edges of these. So I've drawn a line through so I can see them um, let me just draw this. There we go. And where they intersect, so where they intersect, I'm going to go about uh, like literally um, 0.4, like 0.3, I would say, of a centimeter to, um, to the left of the left and to the right of the right. So I can see where the, where the lines meet, and then I'm just going to go point three centimeters, you can just eyeball it, put a little dot there, and then from that dot, I'm going to draw a, 
triangle. So I'm going to take the tri a thin triangle. What is that called? An isosceles triangle. Is that right? No. What is that? I can't even remember. And I'm going to cut into that in a second. So I'm just going to draw. You can use your straight edge if you need to, but it's like that shape. So if I take this, it's like this. Let me just get a little bit closer. It's like this shape. So everybody here can see. It's like that shape. I've drawn that there. So if on Instagram, it's like that. It's like a Christmas tree shape. Please remind me what that triangle is called. <laughs> um, it's not an isosceles. Anyway, let's do it on the other side. So again, I'm going to eyeball it where the two lines intersect. It's basically the corner of your book spine. You're going to go, I'm going to go about mm, 0.3 uh, centimeters out. And then I'm going to take it into um, a triangle. And again, you can use your straight edge here. So I can use a straight edge there and I can use the straight edge here so I can just make this nice triangle. Okay. And now I'm going to take my bookbinder shears and I'm going to cut this triangle. So I'm going to cut here. There we and again you can use box cutter. And here. So you can see the shape, everybody. I'm just going to get this a little bit closer for these on YouTube. You can see that, again, it's very similar to what I drew there, that lovely triangle. Um, same thing on the other side, taking it. And again, it's not right at the corner. That's important that you're not getting it right at the corner. Okay, that's my other one. And then I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So again, I'm just going to draw here. It's like I'm basically drawing an X first, right at the corner there. And I can draw that all the way across here and here, there. Again, then what I want to do is I want to take it just a tiny bit out, center it. There we go, out. And then from there, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna use my straight edge here. I'm going to get to my little dot. I'm gonna draw a triangle. And mm -hmm. you don't want it too wide. You know, there are those little sort of Christmas tree triangles. There we go. Mm -hmm. And here, there. Then I'm just going to snip those. And again, I can use a box cutter with my straight edge. So there we go. And I'll do it that way this time. Here we go. Okay. I'm just like slightly obsessed with my book binding shears. <laughs> um, it just cuts through it much better. So I do recommend this is a good investment is it's not like in um these are just incredible there we go you have to kind of like line it up i love them and there we go okay right everybody let's just get that one a little bit of a snip there's my box cutter there so we are nearly ready to um Let's just get that off right there. There we go. So what we're going to do now is repair the book. So we're going to bring the book back and we're going to glue our new spine with the book spine support and glue it. I have one more thing to cut off. Um, glue it and then we're going to insert it and then there's a lot more gluing to do. So you've got the, these flaps are going to flap in. So they're actually going to flap in. And that's why we had to move them out just a little bit. So they are going to flap in and we're going to cut this off here. So you can score this here. I mean, that's fine. You could score it and, or just fold them in. That's what I'm doing. You can use a straight edge if you'd like to help you fold them in. 
and then fold that one in and then it's easier to step away. So with that, so I folded them in ta -da -da, and now I'm going to snip. We don't need this. Well, at least for this book, we don't snip it off and voila. And then same one on this side. There we go. Perfect. It's our Excellent. So now I'm going to actually put glue on all this PVA and, um, and get my shiny bit. There we go. And glue it. Um, brilliant. Look at you guys are all chatting. I can see on the YouTube giving each other advice which is great. So I'm just gonna take my glue and I'm just going to, yup, glue it, or at least put the glue on. Mm -hmm. I have ordered um, proper sort of paint brushes, but they haven't arrived. Um, but this one has been clean, 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 clean. And of course it's fine to use. There we go. And take that off. Move my glue, there we go. Make sure that's balancing on there. Move my scrap paper to the side. And now I'm going to grab my book. Oh my goodness, right. Now, it's really about kind of lining up. So you can have, you can order um, sort of a piece of equipment that actually holds your book in place. But again, it's not like it's drawing right away. So you can carefully put it on and then eyeball it. Yep, I'm happy with that. And then from here, I'm gonna start with one side. So the one side I'm going to start with is here. And you can see I'm opening up the book cover cloth and inserting the new book cloth, which is just brilliant. And just get it done over that shoulder so it fits. Okay, so that's in there and I can feel the shoulder right there. So I've got that one in and again, I can use my bone folder. I'm just gonna get that a little bit of a clean on that side. There we go. Use my bone folder to make sure that it's sealed and it's getting rid of any of those creases. So any of those creases. And then I'm going to flip it over. Now it's much easier and take it on the other side. So I'm gonna fold it over, keeping those tabs out of the way for now. Opening up the book. Let's get you guys a close up here. Opening up again, the book cloth that we um, we're able to take away and getting that right in there, pushing it in and then using the bone folder to properly get in there. Yeah, I'm super happy with that. Making that stick. Yep, that's all stuck. Good. And from here, again, I can do, look at how beautiful that looks. So I'm super pleased with that. Um, I can see the shoulder here. I can even get into the shoulder there a little bit, but we'll do that probably a little bit later. But you can see really bringing that shoulder in. And that's what's so amazing about the bone folder. So you can see that beautiful shoulder is being, sort of, whoops, being reshaped, which is lovely. Now, I have these tabs. So I'm going to open up and just fold in. Same on the other side, open up, fold it in. Might need a little bit more glue, but I think I'm all right. And again, use my bone folder and I might come back and use my other glue for that, but in fact, I will. So this one, the glue is kind of dried a little bit. So I'm just gonna use my fine um, needle. Here we go, there we go. Let's get a little bit of that. Fold it up there, much better. And again, just using the bone folder. 
and that one looks like it needs it as well. So it's nice to have this little piece of equipment so you can finally put the glue on. It's quite brilliant. That has been a good, and so that it's not, you can see here, those of you on YouTube, that I've missed the shoulder here. Here's the shoulder on the inside, and that's where we cut it at that little um, triangle shape so that it's not coming onto the shoulder here so it won't inhibit your book from opening and closing. So again, let's do that on the other side. I'm just gonna need a little bit more glue here, I can tell. And there's a little bit more glue. Dun, dun, dun. Folding it, I'm missing the shoulder, which is brilliant. Um, the inner shoulder, so that's great. I'm just gonna give that a good little wipe. And um, this one needs a little bit of glue too. There we go. Great. Fold that over. And use my bone folder, get it in there, and then it is okay. Right, so now we have this beautiful book um, that, but we need to then glue this back over, and then we're gonna reattach, I know, crazy, reattach the, uh, the original spine. So I am gonna use my sort of fine liner glue object here which is great. And I'm gonna carefully, you can see it's going off to there, but I am gonna just carefully take just a little bit and kind of move it around here and get it in there. And take that. Here we go. Who's excited to see this book when it's finished? I am, that is for sure, okay? Just, and then I finished that, and I'm just gonna, again, need my bone uh, folder, and I'm gonna start to bring it out, okay? And close it down. And just sort of give that a good wipe. Okay, little wipe. I'm concentrating everybody. There we go. Now, let's go do that. Okay, and give that a little wipe. And from here, so here, this is just like this tool is genius. I'm just gonna gently then, really gently, um, up, sort of just getting rid of those wrinkles there. It's fantastic. Just to, you can really iron them out. I mean, it's unbelievable. Really iron them out, okay? And you can even push them out. Yeah, fantastic, so happy with this. That is, one side everybody and let's go to the other side so other side and i'm just going to check in how everybody's doing um, um this is yes there's lots to you can imagine how long it's going to take i think once it's like with everything the, the learning curve it gets um uh, you know easier and easier and I think you'll be I'll become um, quicker and quicker as I you know continue to to do this really which is quite exciting so somebody's just asked what the book is it's um where's my book spine mm -hmm. oh okay well here it is the book is um the wind blows over and it was given to somebody in 1936 so you know it's been around for almost a hundred years um, well at least in our family um, the great thing about these fine liner is that it has this little bit that goes under the top into it so it stops it from clogging so I'm just going to carefully push this over mm -hmm. 
and then I'll use the bone folder in a second. Somebody says that I, it's very patient. That's right. You have to be, um, uh, brilliant, burnishing. There you go. That's it. That is, that is the word that I have been looking for. Fantastic. Burnishing. We are burnishing. Okay. Move that cloth. Burnishing. Thank you. I knew there was a word I was missing that I learned recently. Burnishing. So it's fantastic. So right, everybody, we're nearly to the end. Can you believe it? Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. There you go. Um, an hour later. That's how long it takes. So well, I did a lot of talking. So here is the book, right? So I'm going to show everybody here. You can see here is the book. I'm super happy with it. Um, it's good. Very, very good. But now I'm going to attach the spine back on, the original spine. Now, it's going to look a little bit better than this, but you can see it's had a lot of wear and tear. So we're going to do the best that we can on attaching the spine. And yeah. So this is it, everybody. Thank you for sticking with me. Lots of people um, watching, and it's fun. So, you know, you do a book a week. That's what I'm going to be doing with you, a book a week. So again, I'm going to take my scrap paper, and I'm going to glue, actually, this spine as well, because I can use a mixture between my um, fine liner and the, the paintbrush, and then we're going to make sure it's on the right way. Always check that, that you're replacing the spine. Uh, if you do have one, some books don't because they've just got in such bad shape. If you're replacing it, um, that it goes on the right way. There we go. So this. And I just think the book is going to look, I should have done a before and after, actually. Next time, everybody. Next time. Um, I don't know if I need the fine liner. Actually, I think I can just use the paintbrush. One second, another brush, okay. Thank you for whoever said burnishing. It was the word I, I was thinking about this entire time and I was like, I know that word. Um, I know because I learned that through my, my book binding courses that I've been recently taking and, um, or whatever you want to call them, tutorials. Um, okay. We might have to use the fine liner again. I'm sure we will. So I'm just going to take my book and it is right. It's just double checking it again. That is the top and that is the top. Top and top. And again, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can eyeball it and then move it around once it gets on. Wow. It's fantastic. I'm definitely going to fine line that looks so much better. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it just looks. And then we're going to do something here with the shoulder. It looks so much better. Get that in. And again, the fine liner is amazing. So I can just repair even just a little, even the bits that are coming away here. Just folding them over. I'll use my... Um, I'll use my uh, bone shoulder in a second, and then I'm just going to take this on here. I mean, it has a little bit, and I'm going to fold it over. Just get on here. There we go. And line that up. So remember, the book itself, the spine, was in, you know, not great shape when, um, when it arrived here tonight. So I do feel at least we are making it, um, um, it does already look better. And this is great. I'm just showing you all in a second how it's going to come in. There we go. Get my, I'm going to burnish it. There we go. Look at that. That's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. 
And then I'm going to take it on the other side and push that in. And there we go. Just pick that up a little bit and then bring that over there. Okay. Burnish it. Fantastic. Really get that back together. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then if there's little places I feel like, oh, I need to add a little bit more glue, I can do that as well. So like maybe underneath here, I mean, I did do a little bit. So again, I'm just going to maybe burnish that a little bit and maybe just with my fine liner, just so we don't have that same problem. But other than that, there we go. There we go. And then I can just sort of wipe that away. Mm hmm. Wow. And yeah, up in the corner here. One second, everybody. And then I've done it. And I've reinforced this spine, which I'm super, super pleased about. Reinforced the spine, um, made it, you know, just, uh, I've stabilized it. And I think, oh, here we are. And I think that's what is so important. So stabilizing it, it even looks to me cleaner. So everything looks cleaner to me. It just looks like a more solid book. Um, gosh, thank you all so much. So I'm super pleased with this. I just feel like it's safer in the bookcase at Mapperton. It doesn't have sort of flakes. I mean, I might uh, add a little bit more fine liner when this um, uh, live ends, but it's solidly on there. So it's not going to rip away. And you can see, of course, the black book cloth is coming through it a little bit, but this was coming off. So now we've secured the spine here and that's what's, and glued this back on and given it a much more solid spine there. And again, I can always just burnish it, you know, if I need to just a little bit more, um, around here. So I am really happy, everybody. I'm just going to burnish that a little bit more on that side. You can always take it over, make the shoulder here so I can use my, um, and just put in the shoulder. And voila, everybody. Wow. That took an hour. <laughs> So I just want to say, um, aw, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so pleased with this. Um, I just feel like I've, you know, salvaged something for the future. I mean, it wasn't a valuable book, um, but I think all books are valuable and in their own way. And to me, it's really important to, when I start to work on Alberta's um, diaries in particular, that I've been able to practice um, quite a bit on other books in the Munimit room where the spines are coming off and where they just need to be stabilized. So this was really fun for me. And so I hope you'll join me. I want to come back on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube um, every Thursday, and we'll be working through some more book binding. So I'll probably do another one next week. We'll also be working towards um, stabilizing the letter holder, as well as Alberta's diary. I even have um, just a little bit of repair. It's not necessarily a spine repair. I don't think this is a um, lovely, beautiful Bible that was owned by the 8th Earl of Sandwich. So inside, in fact, I'll give everybody a little look at that. Inside here, it says Edward Earl of Sandwich. That would have been the 8th Earl. And um, this, it, for me... Right now, it's possibly gluing back just tiny bits on here, but there is the problem, of course, you can see it is coming away. So, you know, the real question is, and there's some tape in here. Um, I've got a really, and there's some ripped pages in here, which I will be doing uh, basically, by the way, this is really badly done. Somebody actually put like scotch tape. There's nothing we can do about that now. We can't take that off. But um, this one probably does need a reinforcement of the spine now that I'm looking at it. Um, but 
it's a bit trickier because I don't know if I necessarily want to um, uh, cut through this and then take it through, which I could on the inside, I can see. Or if it's just a simple reinforcement, which I probably will do of um, PVA on that. Um, and lastly, this is just uh, common prayers and hymns, and this was given to uh, given from Alberta to her mother-in-law, Christmas 1910, says Motherkin. But I found today on the back that she Alberta listed all of Agnita, which was her mother-in-law's um, children. So you've got Mary, and then Olga, and then Helena, who married uh, Tom, and then you've got George, who married Alberta. It's a really beautiful present that she gave her mother-in-law. And again, there's some taping in there, but we'll just keep that for now. Um, but yeah, really special. This one does not need to be um, restored. Anyway, thank you all uh, so, so much. Um, uh, and I uh, hope to see you back here uh, again for another book binding or leather repair or some type of um, repair here on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Anyway, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to turn off Instagram first, and then I'll come back around and turn off YouTube. Thank you all. Okay, bye everybody on YouTube, Facebook. Thank you all. That's right. Thank you all so much. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Oh, there we go. You can probably see me here much better. Um, thank you all so, so much. Wow, we've had so many people join. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> thanks so much, Wendy. That's good to know. Um, brilliant, everybody. And we'll see you again very, very soon. Bye, everybody.